What we're experiencing here at the National Eucharistic Congress is real life. It's, it's a foretaste of the heavenly Jerusalem. The procession is about to start in hour 15. And holy cow, lots of people. We, we're not living in an age of change, but a change of age. We're living in a time, a change of the ages. It means that it's not Christendom anymore. We're living in a new apostolic age. The, the sense of meaning and, and um, direction of the culture is no longer set by Christianity. It's no longer set by the Catholic vision of things. Uh, that's disappointing, but it's also profoundly exciting because it's not like we've never been here before. In the first 300 years of Christianity, we were constantly in apostolic mode. We knew that we had to operate in a way which was different from how we were operating in a Christian context. And so you didn't do things in Paris the way that you did them in Papua New Guinea, so to speak. Pope St. John Paul II spoke about a new evangelization. He said that the new evangelization would be new in ardor, method, and expression. And I think I would add that it's also new in its circumstances. We've never been here before. We've never been in an age which once was thoroughly Christian, but which over the course of a 300 year arc has thoroughly rid itself of its Christian basis. But the other thing to note about the new evangelization, the new evangelization is the old evangelization. It's the proclamation of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's new in art or method, expression and circumstances, but it's the same thing. And what we've become poor at, because we've become complacent, is that we're not preaching the gospel with all of its overpowering, overwhelming, shockingly epic, high saga force. And that's what we've got to learn how to do again, so that we're capturing not just hearts, but minds. And the Eucharist reinitiates us into a sacramental vision of reality, where we understand that there's a visible world and an invisible world. And that the visible world both hides and conceals the invisible world. And the invisible world is our true home. And if we give our hearts to the visible world, our hearts will always be broken. But if we develop in the course of our life a fierce allegiance to the invisible world, that's the pathway of true happiness. The primary portal that leads us into the invisible world is the sacramental life of the church. And at the epicenter of that is the Most Holy Eucharist. As I'm now home reflecting on days four and five of the Congress, it's clear to me that this was the height of the Congress, the procession into downtown Indianapolis. We had spent three days repenting of sins, calling to mind our faults, seeking God's forgiveness and healing, and adoring our Lord in the Eucharist night after night, being filled with wisdom and knowledge and power. And the speakers this night called for a new Pentecost, called for a new zeal, called for the laity to bring our Eucharistic Lord into the whole earth. And you could feel it. You could feel the sense of renewal, of life, springing forth from these people, all 60,000 of us. And as we finished that final mass and headed home, none of us were the same. This moment, I believe, we will look back as the beginning of the new apostolic age in the Catholic Church in America. to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 Amen.